Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to our podcast, How the Culture Gets It Wrong. It's a podcast on dating, sex, and relationship insights with myself, Andre Parody, my lovely assistant, Tess Listick. Hi, everyone. My lovely wife, Nancy Hello. Parody. Hello. Hi. And this evening, we have another guest star in studio. Uh, Spencer Burnett is a dating coach out of uh, you in Chicago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Spencer, say hi. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Spencer, the house. Hi, Spencer. It's this evening's topic. Or on our podcast is men, the Me Too movement. Now what? Boom! Ooh, Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Felt that silent <laughs> light. Yeah, okay. the ladies <laughs> held their breath because you know what's happening right now in the world. How the culture gets it wrong is our podcast is is disturbing, uh, if to say the least. And uh, men are really completely, you know, um, if not confused, a lot of times stuck. Would you agree, Spence? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And then so we're going to have a conversation, his perspective and point of view as a dating coach, mine as a relationship and uh, communication coach. Uh, I think it's going to be quite interesting. So let's go right to it, Spencer, um, because it's interesting. Our guests aren't just falling out of the sky. These people, as I, you know, don't get to be the kind of people they are because life was lovely, cute and fantastic and, you know, like flowers and bunnies. Am I right? Right, yeah. So tell us your story because I think that's crucial to, you know, as a part of your development and, and what you're up to in the world, please. Yeah, so I, uh, I actually learned NLP at eight years old uh, due to an autoimmune disease that caused me to get um, extremely high fevers every four to six weeks for my entire life. My mm. first fever was at four months old. And I was in an experimental study with uh, some clinical psychologists on how to how to use imagery and language to be able to manage pain. And uh, as I learned this, I, real that I realized that my internal reality was actually more real than my external reality. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm cutting you off because I want some juice on this. This is actually juicier <laughs> than, than you kind of like stating as a no big deal. It's, big deal. it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. So you're, you're at eight years old, you learned NLP because you were sick your entire life? Yeah. Like yeah. on the brink, on the brink of, of death? Is that what I'm talking about? Like 105 fever is deadly. Yeah, I had my toes up to the line more times than I can count. Yeah. <sighs> wow. What does, that do, what does that do to a kid? Like your spirit, your state of mind? I mean... You know, it, it. You know, looking back on it, I, you know, essentially, I was tortured by a faceless monster. Right. It's not like I was tortured by, you know, my father or, you know, I was bullied as a kid. Mm. I had this faceless monster that would come and attack me um, uh, for no reason. It's not like, you know, I grew up in a really healthy family. Like we ate well. My parents have a beautiful relationship, and uh, and it just seemed to come out of nowhere. And what it what it ended up developing in me is the ability to hold a lot of chaotic space for someone, which has really helped me in my coaching career. Wow! So like this, all of that made you that guy. Yeah. So at eight, you learned, learned NLP. Say more, because I think that's fascinating. Because I teach NLP as well, but like at eight. <laughs> yeah. Eight oh, years old. Hold on. Tess. I, I was just going to ask. So what what exactly does NLP stand for? Oh, go ahead, Spencer. So. <laughs> Uh, NLP is no, no, uh, neuro linguistic programming. Essentially, it's computer programming for the human mind. So the same way that programmers learn, you know, HTML, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's to be able to connect the idea of the programmer to the functionality of the computer. An NLP practitioner can do the same thing by um, creating new associations to triggers in the human mind, so you respond differently to the way that the world is around you it's amazing wow. it's amazing stuff i yeah. mean that sounds very advanced <laughs> now i can yeah. understand for i yeah. mean for eight years old wow right. so at eight so that saves your your life in a sense doesn't it yeah absolutely <laughs> I, I mean even I, they used to prescribe me a liter of liquid vicodin at a time and it's wow. like I, you, that's not good for a child it's not good for an adult no. it's dangerous and too it'll wear you out yeah, and, and so um, I'd been to a hundred different doctors for uh, you know uh, different specialists all around the world, and this was the most effective thing that I found to be able to, you know, have control over my reality. Unbelievable. So now, how do we translate that guy to the dating coach? That's a fascinating leap, <laughs> my man. It, it is. So you know, it the my my journey is a fascinating cocktail of you know the, that that type of trauma but also a lot of gifts that were given to me i come from a really healthy nuclear family 
My parents have an amazing relationship. My dad was an excellent communicator and my mom was very, you know, charismatic and so and they have a great relationship. So I was I re- was really taught how to manage my emotions and to communicate with others really effectively on top of that, you know, the NLP training. Mm. And you know, I was always the the guy to be giving advice whether it was amongst friends or whether it was like, you know, starting a little business or in relationships. And uh, I started coaching um, when I was uh, when I was 15. I was a fitness coach until I was about 26. Okay. And then I got into relationship coaching. It actually started as uh, like sex coaching for men. And then as I as I started kind of reverse engineering, you know, what it took to have to you know be a great lover or you know give a good orgasm. Uh, you know, it, it, it really was really more about connecting with her heart and mind than it was about pressing the right buttons. Of course, of course. And, and so, you know, when, when you learn how to connect with someone's mind, you have access to the rest of their consciousness, mm-hmm. whether it's their body or their spirit and stuff. So um, I started, uh, I started um, my practice in 2009. I've been doing it ever since. Nice. Oh. Very cool. So let's go into like, the, juice, the, juice, the juice of it here because we go from that – Right, you know, culture where all of a sudden Me Too explodes. Right, that was mm-hmm. two years ago. Right, right. and it started out as, as something to like. Uh, it, uh, it was like a, a what was that? A revealing of all the crap and the shit. Excuse my French, and all the uh, injustice that happens, you know, in the world, and and it's in specific areas apparently, but then it's also everywhere. Now, right. Spencer, take it from there, please. Yeah, you know, the Me Too movement started uh, as, I believe it was a, an executive for Nickelodeon. And he had sexually assaulted a woman and she got the courage to speak up and speak out. And then it turned out that many other women in their business had experienced that same type of uh, abuse. Right. And so uh, and so they spoke out and hashtagged it Me Too. And that really gave women the like the the power of like the of community and realizing that we're in the same boat together mm-hmm. to speak up against you know men that were being you know misogynistic and, or or you know sexually abusive. Right. And where it where it took it from there it was all of a sudden that you know society was like, hey men, like be careful or we're going to call you out. Well, the thing is, is most guys are really great guys. Yes. And so for the good ones, you know, that maybe are a little shy or, you know, were, were already a little confused, it became like, well, okay, I was told I need to be more bold, but now I'm being told if I'm too bold, then I'm going to be punished and I'm going to be called out. Mm. So it, it leaves them, you know, paralyzed. Right. And it, it makes you, it forces you to choose between, you know, loneliness or you know, um, or, or, or being not very nice to women. And since most guys are good guys, they choose loneliness and they stay stuck in that. And that's become a huge problem. Right, because some men have been actually ruined by this, right? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. I have a question, Spencer. So that you say choosing loneliness because is there, there's a fear of um, not only being called out, right? But um, it seems like it's the unknown unknown because it, well let me ask let me ask this question when i remember when this was in real time like what originally started was um something was a good platform for for women to finally get out that this was happening to to them and then it got diluted and people were jumping on the train and then it just mm. went to to shit Thank and you. and uh, so i'm wondering if the men i i'm trying to formulate my question here on is it because it's so delete, diluted that men are just kind of withdrawing from from the whole situation to avoid it all? Yeah. Well, I think yeah. if I may, I think I could close it, it here. It, okay. Well, close it up here for you is that you know it became a bandwagon for everything that's ever been done to women, and then some women who were just bad women because there are bad women as there are bad men in the world. Yes. They use that as an opportunity to destroy men that they were mad at or angry about. You know what I mean? So now there's, there was a lot of exaggeration and lies. Uh-huh. And for some reason in our culture that we don't challenge women who say have been sexually abused. You know, that we don't challenge that. We just believe her. And so without mm-hmm. due process, men have been destroyed and accused and, and lost their career, lost their scholarships, lost their jobs. Yeah. Right? In the name of some woman said... You know, and so in that, what's happening now is is gotten so big, so fast, so out of control because nobody's really holding 
the fire up to these ladies because you know it's 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 rude really would to, would be mm-hmm. rude to question them right uh-huh. even though there's a lot of questions and people are all thinking really you know to uh, some of this point uh, the, these some of these such circumstances but what happened now is that it's made women a liability in our culture uh, for men there we go mm. okay so mm-hmm. now there are, there are companies in our country now who will not hire women to work for them because women are now too much of a liability for their damn company <laughs> Now that's exactly opposite of the whole of what they fucking wanted. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like with yeah. me, like we're trying to like close yeah. the gap and make everything even and equal and 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 and, and uh, what's the word? Um, make everything fair or yeah, you know, fair. Or, or right, like fair game. And now mm-hmm. we're actually killing the game because some people took it too far and now made it a really like too dangerous for companies and men and to, mix, gotta, to mix to mix up with ladies. I can understand. Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So that become yeah. the women are too much of a liability because she could be a little bit off, and you know she's alone with one and of their destroy. coworkers, yeah. you know, and it goes to the company, and now they have to being sued, and they have to pay her for it. So, so companies are now not hiring women because of this. Wow, getting carried away. Yeah. Now another thing that's terrible, yeah. Spencer. I want your input on this. Is that like, <sighs> wow? I just like this one just Gosh. that you know they're. You know, I, when we, my kids were born, um, we learned CPR, right? I'm not mm-hmm. a, I'm not an EMT guy, but I know CPR because I learned. A lot of people, a lot of civilians know CPR for different reasons, right? Now, what's happening now is men will let women die on a sidewalk, frothing at the mouth, choking on something, and or having an epileptic fit because they can't touch the woman on the floor because he puts his mouth on her or his hands on her chest to give her CPR. He can be accused of sexual molestation and sued. So men are watching women die purposely now because of this Me Too movement. Your turn. Wow. <laughs> Your turn. Wow. Over calibration. Wow. You think? Right. Well, I, that, that's the first I'm hearing of yeah. that. No, this is real. And, and, and that, is, that is an example of how it, how it does go too far. And we're so used to having like this defined expectation of the relationship men have to women. If you take a look 50 years ago, it was get a good job, provide for the family, Mm -hmm. create a safe space so the women can take care of the home and the kids, which is equally as important. Oh, and Uh, hard, and hard. Well, (laughs) yeah, I mean, women are responsible for making all the people in the world. That's pretty freaking important. (laughs) (laughs) But see, somehow, it's funny, I'm just to interject here, but somehow we've deleted all that to like, that's not a big deal, and you know, you should be, uh, being a CEO is more important than being a, a mom or whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. like that CEO had a mom that oh, helped right. him become CEO. <laughs> right. So that's really well, what it is. And we're talking about how the culture gets it wrong. I think that's a major one, right? And, and again, just I'm, I'm ranting now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just no. I want to get back on track with you, Spence. Is that you know the feminist movement was always the feminist movement was always about opportunity. Yep. Opportunity, equal, equal opportunity for women, and what's now yeah. happening is is not what's happening anymore. It's a anti-male you know paradigm and, and right. if women aren't super women if they don't shoot for super womanhood you know they're less than and actually these women who are super women actually don't exist you know they're <laughs> burnt out on the floor somewhere miserable mm-hmm. anyway moving on <laughs> uh, so <laughs> i know i derailed you a little bit well, he okay this all started because spencer said men will choose loneliness mm. why, why don't we get back to that because that's that's harsh yeah well, I mean, they, it's, most men want to love and respect women. Mm-hmm. They, want to play, they want to play a partnership role with them, but without this well-defined structure that, uh, in society, we don't know like, where, our, where our role is. Mm-hmm. And so in, in st- and if there are no answers, we just tend to shrink as opposed to get out and start asking questions. Right. And, and and that that's the power of of you know of technology and and what we're doing right now. I mean, people are probably listening to this on their computer or or their phone, and it, it really starts with with um, taking in more information from from people in you know in the in your community or who you listen to, or um, you know ha- you know hiring a coach or or just getting into the community to share ideas so you can see you can see relationships from multiple perspectives. So you can be equipped to handle any situation because right. that's what it ultimately has come down to. There's no longer a structure for it, uh, you know, an actual structure. 
that there is a way to develop a structure between each individual man and woman so you can synergistically be in partnership. Right. Because one, one thing I know, just to back you up on this, absolutely, is that I know, for, I see it every day. When men don't know what to do, they back off. They do nothing. Mm-hmm. They just pull back, right? Like, I don't know if, like, so, they, and they, they literally become isolated, you know? Mm-hmm. They don't know what to do with women. They pull back, and they get on their computers and do, right. and do loneliness there for about 10 minutes, mm-hmm. and they go to bed. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's yeah. another problem because, you know, it's a whole other problem. Anyway, so now, from here... All right, so we have Me Too that sort of like create an avalanche of reactions, right? We have men pulling back or, or confused or not doing anything, right? So you say what with this? Now, what's, this, what's the cure? How do we manage this? How do we help men? Well, you, men need to go from seeing their role in a woman's life from a noun, like be this, to a verb, do this. So, like, what is it that they need to do? Mm-hmm. Well, it, it all starts with with um, with being able to have a have communication with a woman to uh, to understand the expectations that the two of you have, because. Women, you know, you know, the feminist movement really worked for female equality, and that's getting better as time go goes on. I don't think it's still completely there, but it is getting better. So really? it's I, no longer <laughs> women's position in the world to raise, you know, attach themselves to a man and support him in his dreams while she raises his kids. Mm-hmm. If that's what she chooses, like fantastic, that's a super important role. But also, women are empowered to have their own careers and ambitions and and, and stuff like that. So relationships have become more fluid Mm -hmm. and so that really comes down to the way that you're constantly communicating and growing with each other so it's it's different than like it used to be find the right person and attach now it's it's not find the right person it's find the person that you can grow with the best and learn how to communicate your needs and expectations Mm, interesting i think it's yeah i think it's always been that you just maybe differently um because mm-hmm. there was a lot of like obvious standards back in the days. It was like you know there was a standard way of doing life as a man, mm-hmm. as a woman, and I agree. Like things have changed rad- radically. Obviously, what I see that's not working. What I see that's not working is that the overcalibration again of of masculinizing women. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you over masculine masculinize women. There's a price to pay for that. It will cost somewhere some damage, some some pain. The same way that if you over-feminize men, there's a huge price to pay for that. You know, the kids that go back to school with machine guns and kill guys, kill, kill, kill people, are not masculine men. They're not masculine boys, right? They're teenagers that typically, if you look at the stats, it's incredible. Most, most of I think, I think all but three never have, didn't have a daddy, right? No role model, nobody to like, raise them to be men, right? Accountability, um, integrity. You know, team effort, part of a system, right? Like just all the goodies that men have inside of them. But somebody needs to water that seed, a male, a father, a grandfather, right? So mm-hmm. when, and, and when society says, because it's everywhere in school right now, that, you know, everything feminine is being encouraged, everything masculine is being deleted or considered toxic, for mm-hmm. God's sakes, right? So when men can find their place and they're a, bit, a little bit off already because these kids are usually off. Like they're shy, they're, they're awkward, they can't talk, they don't have friends, they can't talk to girls, right? They go to school, they're tortured by men and the women, you know, making fun of them, right? They can't find their mojo and they come back with machine guns. Mm. Yeah, mm. Right? you know, I... So I, my, I, my point is I this, this is over-feminized men. This is what happens when you feminize men, right? They become unstable emotionally, you know, and because they still have testosterone, they come back with a vengeance. Like it's the case over and over. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it is. I, I feel like we have done an overcorrection. Yes. Intent. Intent. You know, when you when you have something that's in that not in balance, you kind of overcorrect too much right. to make up for that balance, and then you've got to keep going back and forth until you find the middle. And the you know the for men it, for so long it was seen it was seen as wrong to have any feminine or beta traits Mm -hmm. whereas beta is not a is not a weaker trait it is just it's just a it's just a different form of strength so i feel like both the masculine and feminine energies are both are both necessary in men and women now granted with with men i I feel like it should be more masculine like the balance is at a different point but it's really about when it's about it's about context 
when do you pull out more of those feminine traits and when do you pull out more of those masculine traits? Damn. So, you know, in, in my relationship, you know, I play a very masculine, masculine role. I'm the, I'm the provider, you know, I'm, I'm the leader. So my girlfriend is a singer and when she has an audition, I am total beta position. I'm the supporting role. She's the star. I'm the one carrying her bags. I'm the one checking in while she's relaxing and warming up her voice. I'm getting the hot tea with the lemon and, and the honey. And to play a beta role does not mean that you are less than or weak. You can, you can play a beta role in a very empowered way. And this, I actually run my business like this as well. We call it situational leadership. Mm -hmm. There's one person that, that is like the, the head of the company, the visionary, but each person has their gift. And when it's time for that person to shine their gift, they're the one that's in charge. So it's about having a balance of those energies. And it's about the context of uh, and discretion of when you use each one of those energies. And I think that's really what's what's screwing everyone up. Right. Mm, so, well put. okay, yeah. So, yeah. do you have any questions for him? Because well, I got something I just, to throw in. Yeah, I mean, it's just very loving. It's very loving. Of knowing, course. Knowing that we're not going to stay here. You know, we're not going to live here. But this is situational. And this is what mm -hmm. needs to be done to get to get through this. And then we go back to roles. I think that's that's really interesting the way you put it. And I feel like you do that like Tuesday night when we filmed. You were there for me, you know, and f supporting me. And, and Right. Well, she's a dancer, a choreographer. And Tuesday night <laughs> she was filming is a big deal. And she needed my support. So I became, you yeah. know, the supporter. I get it. Definitely. Yeah. Now, but I, I'm going to say this because this is the part of the work that I do, right? Mm. So what seems to be normal, and I say this with quotation marks, right? <laughs> normal, because there's no such thing as normal. But we, we're all androgynous. We both have masculine and feminine energy. We both have both. We know this, right? right? Typically, women carry their masculine on the inside and carry their feminine in their bodies on the outside. Mm -hmm. Men carry their strength and their masculine on the outside in our bodies mm -hmm. and our feminine on the inside. So there's, no, there's never going to be a man as tough as a woman inside. And there's not a woman that's ever going to be sensitive as a man inside. We're cream puffs. <laughs> on the <inside. laughs> I like that. We're, we are. That's we funny. absolutely oh. are. You know, so that's how the yin and yang uh, uh, sh uh, shows up in e each one of us. Now, but we know this is what the problem I have with the culture. I talk about, you talk about the, the pendulum going too far, swinging too much to the, the opposite, is that back in the 50s, you're right. Like if a guy cried, he was a pussy. You know, you weren't allowed to, you know, do anything. You know, I remember, I remember in the 80s, like if a guy frosted his hair, Mm -hmm. Like got some tips in his hair. He was gay. You know what I mean? That was too feminine. Yeah. Like guys did not really? color their hair. Hmm. That was gay. You know yeah. what I mean? So never mind today, right? Like I mean, but yeah. I mean back then it was just that little yeah. trying to be pretty yeah. was like not masculine. And also to make fun of him. So it went from one side completely of having no access to being you know connected to your heart, your feelings, your emotions, or whatever. But it's always been the same formula, though, right? So the culture might have deviated of what's. Uh, inappropriate like too masculine and too macho is too big right it makes these guys like impossible for women to, women to connect with because there's not enough heart right and mm -hmm. however too much heart it, it, it disempower these guys to actually do what they have to do to get their lives together right, right. they can't get their shit together if they're too feminized and too soft so what's always been the right formula if again if we talk about what's more normal but I want to say more like what works best we know this now Right. What works best is if you if you have a male body, with a penis and testes, right? That you you're soaked in testosterone. That your brain is driven to do to be masculine. You want to cultivate your sensitive feminine inside to about twenty five to thirty percent of your life and being, which means mm -hmm. you operate mostly in the masculine, but then you have to have access to your sensitivities to be able to be with, with a woman, to be able to see the difference between, you know, now I need to be the supporter, right? To be able to mm. talk to her, to be able to feel her, to be able to be sensitive to her needs, to be able to be aware that she has needs that you can't see when you're in the mask and blah, 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 right? So you don't live there. So you can't live there. Right. You have to get that calibration, but you can't go 50-50, because that's too yeah. that's 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 confusing to you and to her, and that's and what's you happening. can't go less than that because really now you're a noodle. Do you know what I mean? So right. the same with women. Women have to really a, a normal, natural, beautiful, healthy woman lives in a feminine seventy percent of the time, seventy five percent, eighty percent of the time, mm -hmm. and it's a twenty five to thirty percent that she gets to 
it has to manage as a woman, you know, in the world, business, money, career, all that stuff, right? But yeah. her heart, her essence as a woman needs to lead her more mm. for the man to actually see her as a woman and be able to connect with that. It's the opposition that attracts us. So a man, he's a man, will attract a feminine woman and vice versa. So what's happening in our culture now, we, dis- we try to neutralize all this 50-50. And this is where, to m- in my world, everything goes to shit. Yeah. Feminine men aren't attractive to women. Feminine men, men hate them, right? Masculine women irritate the shit out of us, right? And and they usually end up fighting and and, and fighting for control, not understanding the, the calibration. That's the problem that I have. That's the th- that's my work. That's what I teach all day long. Beautiful women that are strong, independent, and powerful, raised that way. Twenty five years doing it this way. They have money, business, careers, and they go. No one wants to date me. No one's asking me out. I go on a date, the guy says, I'm lovely, he never calls me back. What's wrong with me? Too masculine. Too masculine, too masculine, too masculine. That's the problem that I see today because no one is talking about femininity, the power of femininity, and the fact that maximum male are looking for that. Spencer? Yeah, Ooh. you know, Ooh, I, I I agree <laughs> with your with your like you know twenty five to, to to thirty or twenty to thirty percent, mm. wherever that is. The 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 battle between men and women is in that disparity between twenty and thirty percent mm-hmm. because we have a- so much access to people these days that we expect to have exactly what we want, mm-hmm. and so uh, a woman might require a man to be thirty percent feminine when in fact he's only showing up twenty five, and she sees that as a problem because. There are, you know, she has access to a million men through the other end of her phone or computer. And so that's really where it's about expectation management. And in a relationship, you know, if if you are in a relationship that you want to, you know, move forward to be, you know, committed, you know, I really suggest that people, you know, make a list of two things. Here's what I'm willing to give in this relationship. Mm. And then the next list is here's what I require from my partner. And then when you, you know, so I, I'll say this is what I request or what I need in a relationship, and I match that up against my my girlfriend's. This is what I'm willing to give, and we, and, and then we have a negotiation mm-hmm. because <laughs> and th- that's how you build that that connection. You're speaking my language, my man. That's yeah, amazing. that's yeah. all it is. Because the problem is nobody communicates, and then people, you know, right? Commu- and then and I find it interesting. People say, you know. Like, because everybody talks about communication, right? Communication, communication. What the hell is communication? Words? No. Communication mm-hmm. is, are you getting the results you're trying to get from across? You know what yep. I mean? If you're communicating, you're getting the results that you want. If you're not, you're not communicating. So it's really, mm. it's a very delicate, you know, and complicated and sometimes very tricky um, getting to because really, like he just said it, that it's communication by the negotiating of your wants and needs. Mm-hmm. Right. Clearly, this is I want. This is what I want. This is what I don't want. This more of this, less of that. This is a deal breaker. This is great. Right, right. You know what right. I mean. This is all communication, but then you have to know who you are as well, right. and you have to know what you want. And sometimes we actually get to it as we do it together. But it has to be an open conversation. No one does this in my world that I know of very naturally. <laughs> you know, so they end up with a coach like me to open those channels and actually give them homework and then encourage them and give them liberty. Like, you need to do this, 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 this. We'll talk next week. You know what I mean? Spence? Right. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Like, uh, everyone's communication style is a little bit different. And if you've met someone that you really feel connected to, you may have different communication styles. Mm-hmm. And that is the value of bringing in a coach that has uh, that has a you know a series of tools that w- once you you know kind of describe what you're going through in your relationship, that coach can then pull those tools and say, hey, try this out, right. see how you guys connect on that. Yeah. You know, I, I know in my past relationships, you know, I, I used to have uh, in a relationship I had, was in you know eight years ago, we had something called the ultimate fight card. So if we were in a dispute or argument, we would pull out that card, and at that point in time. We would um, we would stop arguing. We would go out, you know, grab something to eat, <laughs> come back, maybe make love, and then after that, then we take the card off the table and we can continue the conversation. That worked in that relationship. Wow. Mm. In my next relationship, that didn't work. So right. we had to come up with you know mm. with uh, with with new tools. And so a coach will have a series of tools because they have right. all that experience, not only in their own relationships but with their with their clients. Right. And then you can find what works best for you. Oh, that's beautiful. That's, awesome. that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, wow, yeah. Spence, love Woo. this. Really yeah. love this. 
Ladies, anything for Spencer? Because we've got to wrap this. Got to wrap it up. I didn't really, I mean, I just was observing the fact that you guys are speaking the same language, although it's what you see in the culture is slightly different, different, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's still the same. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to articulate that, but it was kind of cool seeing that because I didn't know what the conversation was going to be like. I, I so think you just did. Just I think you just did. <laughs> 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 I think that's perfect. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Spencer, so... I know you deal with men and kind of um, helping them find what Andre, cons- you know, talks about the inside femininity, which you describe as the beta man. Mm-hmm. And so do you see an over Do you talk to women as well? Do you see this over calibration in your clients and talk to women also about how, how to kind of um, respond to his needs as a masculine man as well? Yeah, you know, it, it, it depends on the woman. You know, I was just recently having a ca- conversation at a conference that I was at of uh, a woman or women that are, you know, successful entrepreneurs really having a hard time finding a man that mm-hmm. can handle the, the power of their femininity. These aren't right. overly masculine women. There are women that are in their divine feminine power. And that's, uh, and, and it, like, femininity and power for most men does not make sense. <laughs> and and so once you once you realize that there's power in every type of energy that we have mm-hmm. and you can you can you can see that then once you you can actually see the value and the power in that then you can calibrate your masculinity to support that. Right. And okay. uh, and so yeah, did that answer your question? Yeah. So say more yeah. about you just said it the how did you just put it you said uh, um, powerful femininity. Powerful femininity. Yeah. Say more. So, I, I mean, you know, just like you said, Andre, the, the, like, the divine feminine power is one of the most powerful forces in the world. Okay, I thank mean, you. It, it, it Some of the guy just said it. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. So it, it means it, what? It, I mean, it, it is, it's the reason that the masculine is activated. Thank you. You know what I mean? <laughs> you think, that we, would, you think we that we would be nearly as motivated with, without, uh, without the, the feeling of that, that divine feminine power around us? Right. If that wasn't around us, all guys would need is a dryer, a microwave, and somewhere to sleep. And you know a computer. I mean? it, <laughs> yeah, and a computer. <laughs> it, it propels us to be better men. Oh. It propels us to be excellent. It wow. propels us... It, uh, it propels us to um to achieve and succeed it is the jet fuel of the masculine power oh my God. that does all its great shit this is the shit i say <laughs> all the time i'm sorry go ahead when, when you <laughs> when you acknowledge and honor that in a woman like it is it, it, it a lot of guys are afraid of that because once you realize her power then he might feel less than mm. but when you realize that you are you are both divine royalty that come from different places that are not meant to complete each other but to be divine in your own right and then share and bounce off each other now you got now that's a whole different game of connection and and relationships right. and now and it's I, a, yeah and ahead. i feel i feel like we are like like this over calibration of masculine and feminine energy we're eventually going to get to that point where people are are seeing this in each other men are seeing it in women women are seeing it in men yeah. and that's why that's why I'm just so honored to be a part of this podcast because <laughs> it's conversations like this mm-hmm. that are bringing people to the middle where both sides are seen as valuable different but equally as necessary. Wow. 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 That Ooh. was a chill on a Sunday, my man. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> good Lord. Good Lord. You got it. You get it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the shit right there. Like, you it's, know, a, th- it's inspiring to know that there's people now we're starting to see this common thread mm-hmm. of people sprinkled all over the United the States that are, are doing this kind of mission. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, like my spirit's starting to lift because it was getting dark there for a while. Like, yeah, me you too. Know. Me yeah. too. Like, so and, some of the stuff that I see, yeah. that what disturbs me the most was happening in the schools, and that's still really, like, really scary for me. It's really dark. But there's there's a lot of people doing this kind of stuff out there yeah. now, and women waking up to like, hey, you know what I mean? We're not, we are. can't we can't make men the, the, the you know the the, the enemy. That's yeah. not, that's not going to work. Like yes. men have all these you know so. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so one of the things that I love what you just finished saying, Spencer, that was yeah. absolutely beautiful. Um, but some of my clients, like she said, like you know, have you, you talk about femininity? They go blank. They have no role models for this. Right? There's nobody in the world as powerful and feminine, seemingly. The ones that are, f- f- you know, powerful are masculine. 
or kick ass or you know or, or like badass chicks or you know like the even actresses you know that's all making a living from the masculine you know what i mean so women have no role model into how to be powerful feminine and this is the awareness that i want to kind of bring around and and it's not obvious and it's not obvious though it's very obvious to us males when we encounter it it just brings us to our knees Mm-hmm. And that's really the power of a woman, and I really want them all to hear this. <laughs> Oof. All right, on this note, this slightly yeah. up. Spencer, <laughs> thank you so much. That was completely awesome. Thank you. Uh, completely, yeah. completely yeah. awesome. Yeah. This was such a this was such a great chat. I mean, any time that there's an opportunity to to um, share with other like minded people on, on a platform to share with you know the rest of the country or mm. the rest of the world. Like th- this is it, it. This is such necessary. This is such a necessary conversation because yes. at the end of the day, what we're truly craving is connection, and what truly tortures us is isolation. And it's this conversation that's going to bring us back to the middle. So thank you guys for having me. Oh, Amen, brother. <laughs> wow, that's thank how you. that's how you close it. Yeah. So Spencer, like, so how do people find you? Because you're a dating coach out in Chicago, right? Yeah, but you do this on the internet as well, like guys. So you could be anywhere in the world, or anybody could be anywhere in the world. How do they find you? Absolutely. Um, you can go to spencerburnett.com and see my Omega Man program that I run for men and teach them how to, you know, meet women everywhere that they go, be the type of man that every woman loves, so they can be with the woman of their choice. Uh, I've got a book coming out this spring called The Cool Guy's Guide to Fitness, teaching guys who are players and turning them into partners, turning them into a one-woman man. Ooh, oh. And uh, <laughs> and yeah, so you can go to spencerburnett.com and just uh, see what I've got going on there. Love that. Thank Very you. Cool. So, Tess, for us <laughs> on sure. our side. So the Facebook page is Project Equinox with Andre Parody. We have content on there all the time. The website is projectequinox.net, and we have um, blog material, we have YouTube clips, um, little art, uh, little voice clips as well. This is also where you can find the latest podcast, mm-hmm. um, and you can also contact Andre for coaching. Right, so because I do the same, I coach clients, and then my favorite thing to do as well is special events. All right, well, so on this note, thank you so much again, Spencer, Tess, Nancy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Absolutely. And to our listeners, thanks for listening and tuning in. And if you like this, please share it. That's the point. We're trying to change the culture. We're trying to bring a different awareness and open this conversation as we just did with Spencer. Fantastic stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Until next week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Bye. Bye.